The Ghanaian Times this morning says, Voter registration exercise. EC targets 15 million Ghanaian voters for December 2020 elections. KNUSC uh, SHS headmistress interdicted over death of student. Government spends over 233.9 million Ghana cities on nationwide free water supply. COVID-19 Chief Justice self-isolates for 14 days, according to a letter signed by the Judicial Secretary. The Daily Guide. Education Minister recovers from COVID-19. CD performs well in first half and Tobinko wins two awards. Also, the banner headline is Top Judge Dead, CJ Isolate, and Justice Jaisayo uh, blesses so may he rest in peace. A very fantastic judge there. EC targets uh, has been exceeded according to the Daily Guide. The Daily Graphic, Graphic MNG Consult partner to coach JHS students and COVID-19 infection state institutions shut down. GES investigates death of KNUST SHS students. Headmistress interdicted. And EC has also launched campaign on transparency for election 2020. The BNFT um, is uh, the business finder, I beg your pardon, says wars of businesses persist desperate, uh, despite partial easing of COVID-19 restrictions promote Ghana's cocoa in Asia, according to the uh, ICU, and 1,174 get financial clearance to beef up fight against poor sanitation. My guest this morning via Zoom is the Honorable Sam Jata George. He's a member of parliament for the good people of Ningo Pram Pram, and also joining us will be Echo Vincent Asifua, who is the PRO of the Ministry of Education. We don't have Vincent on yet, but, but when we do have him, we'll connect with him. Sam, good morning. How are you doing? Very good morning to you um, and uh, your viewers. Mm. I'm doing quite well. Can't complain. Interesting colors you have in your shirt. Red, blue, and white. Oh, it's not blue. It's red, black, and cream. Ah, it's cream. It's not white. Wow. And it's black, not blue. We see differently, <laughs> I'm sure. <then. laughs> Your mischief is your mischief is up this morning. There's nothing mischievous about telling the colors in your shirt. But Sam, I'm sure you've uh, followed the issues uh, about the KNUST SHS issues. The headmistress has been asked to step aside. Um, GS says that it will investigate or has commenced the investigations. Yesterday, the students again for the second day were out there demonstrating, and you could see them packed together. I don't know what this says to you. First, as a parliamentarian, as an uncle of many, and as a father. Of, uh, of two as well. What do you think? Father of three now. Not Father two. of three. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Um, let me say a good morning once again to our viewers. And let me say that we're not in normal times. We're in very difficult moments. And it is most unfortunate and most unacceptable that our government will continue to act in a very irresponsible manner. The government of Nanado Dankwa Kufuado has a responsibility, actually swore an oath to defend and protect Ghanaian lives. This current situation that we have mm. that sees schools reopened, um, be it for um, be it for younger uh, students or whatever, mm. for me is completely unacceptable. We cannot have a situation where we are allowing our future leaders, the kids that we have who are not in a position to understand the full implementation of all the protocols, have these kids exposed unnecessarily mm. to possible contamination. This is not something we should countenance. This is not something any, any responsible government uh, made up of people who think mm. would allow to happen. Because look at the situations and the happenings, and we warned about this. This is similar to when we were screaming to government, shut the borders, close the borders, close the airport. Mm. And government refused to listen. Um, today, we've imported the sickness and we are where we are. Now, we're screaming again, shut down the schools. Government simply does not want to shut down the schools. Because government says it's put, yes, it's it's put in place all the measures that would keep the students safe. Uh, and so, That's why shut down? Gosh. That is... That is hogwash and bladder dash. I mean, it, it makes no sense. Government has put in no protocols. I mean, what protocols have they put in place? You're seeing the death in the schools. You're seeing the infections in the schools. Um, the, 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 the substance of the pudding or the taste of the pudding is in the eating of it. You're hearing teachers. You're hearing, you're hearing the, the, the teacher unions, Angel Kapunu and his union, coming out and saying, look, 
this is wrong. This is bad. You're seeing teachers and their, and their families getting infected. You're seeing school children get infected. So I, I really don't understand what is government's motivation. Look, it is important. And, and for me, this is my message to every Ghanaian parent who has a kid in any of those schools. Those kids are your children, not the children of government. Those kids are your responsibility, not the responsibility of a government that has failed. Go to the schools and withdraw your kids. Insist that you will take your children home. Government has no power to, to keep your children in school. But that is not the protocol, that's Sam. Happened. Sam, that's not the protocol. What is, what, the children what, what are in are school to prepare comes... to write an exam. Please, Johnny, what are you talking about protocol when it has to do with the life of someone's child? What protocol are you talking about? There is no protocol anywhere. Look, would you sit, Johnny, and, and would you sit as a parent and see your, car, your kid go to die because of, of the irresponsibility of a government? Look, it's better to miss a grade than to dig a grave. It's important that you save your life, the life of your child. What does it benefit you if you want your child to, because of one grade, one academic year, mm. one term, and you end up losing that child? Like has happened in KNUST Senior High School, would you be able to bring back that child? Where is the protocol? Look, the reality is the reality. Even our hospitals, even the hospitals do not have enough in place to protect the hospitals, the frontline workers. There is not enough. And you think there's enough in the schools? You had a teacher from Inswatri SDA who sent you a text who, who said to you that, look, mm. The, temp the, the, the temperature guns are reading the same. You can't even tell what it is. Mm. And the teachers themselves do not have PPEs. So when a child ex is exposed or a child is infected and the child is showing all the symptoms, mm. the, ch the teachers themselves are not in a position to offer first line of care because they don't have the PPEs. Mm -hmm. And no, no teacher is going to expose themselves. Okay, you see a child who has been infected and showing all the symptoms. And you as a teacher, you don't have the PPEs, you don't have the full body suits to wear, you don't have gloves, you don't have face masks, you don't have goggles. Are you going to use your bare hands to go and touch that child and get infected? That's the problem. These are the realities we're facing. It is highly irresponsible. Look, the decision to keep schools open is a political one. It's a political one because... How, how is that so? Government knows that if... And that's what I'm coming to. Mm. Government knows that if they shut down the schools today... Mm -hmm then government would have no tenable reason why the Electoral Commission must continue with this registration. That's, that's ridiculous so this to suggest. Simply, it is not ridiculous. It is, it, is, it is common sense. It is not just. If you are shutting down the schools today, mm. you have to also stop the Electoral Commission. And that is why your information minister has come out to tell you that it is possible we will have another lockdown after the Electoral Commission has finished this registration. The whole consideration is about the electoral commission. So you, you see foul play. Ask yourself, ask yourself, Johnny, Johnny, ask mm. yourself. Mm. Grown-ups, these are kids. These children in senior high school and junior high school, these are kids, 12-year-old, 13-year-old, 16-year-old, and we expect them to be able to observe the protocols. Yet we are saying that their parents who are working in the Ministry of Finance, their parents who are working in BOST, their parents who are working in Cocoa Board, who are way older, in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, who should know better and can observe the protocols better, we are saying they should go home and go and isolate because there have been outbreaks in those companies. GNPC shut down, the shut down. The Ministry of Finance has been closed down. So we are saying that the older people in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, who are in a better position to understand and appreciate the protocols and implement them. Mm. We're asking them to, to shut down their institutions and go home as precautionary measures. But the children should not go home. So you want the, the schools shut down? Has taken, you want the schools shut down? Must shut down. It is callous. It is wicked. It is heartless. It is insensitive on the part of President Akufuado and Honorable Napo, who has himself been infected and knows how it is and what it is to get infected. To allow and insist that this kid's gone. It is callous. And, and posterity will judge them wrongly Sam, for this decision. Sam, thank you very much. The lives uh, of our kids at risk. Hold your, hold your horses. Let me bring on uh, Vincent. And Vincent, welcome. Thank you very much. Vincent uh, speaks for the Ministry of Education. Vincent, the, uh, and, and we'll end from on the note where Sam, Sam uh, begin on the note where Sam ended. He's made reference to the Finance Ministry, to Cocoa Board, to GMPC, to BOST, 
and, and many others that we can list immediately. Even the Chief Justice is self-isolating and we are asked that some portions of the, of the apex courts be shut down so that we can fumigate. Does it make sense to keep the students in school at this time? Judging by all of what's going on, you've seen the demonstration of the KNUSD SHS student. Does it make sense to keep the students in school? Hello, Vincent, can you hear me? Hello, Johnny. Yes, so I'm asking uh, that some, some, for example, is talking about the fact that the finance ministry uh, has been shut down. Coco Board, GNPC, right. um, also BOSS. So many other examples have been shut down. The Chief Justice has right. shut a portion of the Supreme Court down just for fumigation. He is self-isolating. The President is isolating. Your boss recently returned from self-isolation and is recovered as well. Does it make sense to keep the students in school at this point, judging by all of what's happening around us? Well, let me say a very good morning to your cherished viewers and uh, to my brother Sam. Um, Echo, you need, you need to sit that. up for me. Or tilt, or tilt the, uh -huh. great, this is better. Um, this is basically comparing apples with oranges. Now, if you check the statistics in our various schools, this is what I find. We have about 700 senior high schools across the country. And you are finding out that about one or two of these senior high schools have recorded COVID-19. Now, in the scheme of things, this is an insignificant percentage for anybody to have a conclusion that we should close down schools. Now, when you check the KNUSD senior high school scenario, um, nobody can confirm as we speak today mm. that this is a case of a COVID-19. Um, nobody knows uh, the kind of sickness um, that that particular child was actually going through. Mm. Now, from yesterday, when the regional director of education actually went to the school, now after speaking to relevant stakeholders in the school, what we realized that mm -hmm. there was a prima facie case that was established against the leader of the school, that is the headmistress. Okay. For that matter, nobody knows the extent to which um, the leader of the school, that is the headmistress, was able to show that adequate leadership mm. for last not to have seen this barbaric thing that happened in um, KNOC Senior High School. But I have to add that the Ghana Education Service has shown that leadership uh, to have um, issued a statement instructing the headmistress to step aside so that investigations could go. Now, until the investigations are done, you and I cannot pinpoint as to what really transpired for this barbaric incident uh, to happen. Um, let me also put a real point okay, so we have not before, before you move on, we have be, closed down our schools. Uh, we have not gotten to a point where we have to close down our schools because the data that we have, mm. as far as the senior high schools are concerned, does not suggest that we have to close down our schools. Okay, so uh, if, I, if, I right, if I hear you right, if I hear you right, Echo, Echo, if I hear you... Uh, if, political gimmicks, um, the Ghana Education Service has not thrown its hands in despair that we are not able to manage our schools as we speak. Echo, if I hear you, if I hear you clearly, Echo, Echo, if what? I hear you, if I hear you clearly, you're suggesting that because we have over 700 schools, uh, just one or two incidences in some schools is not enough reason to shut down the schools. But be that as it may, that we have, be that as it may, that we have not been able to confirm whether the gentleman who died in Kumasi died from COVID. We have seen the students demonstrating in their masses, and that's a recipe for the spread of the virus. How does the ministry take this? Johnny, um, the point I'm making is that, as we speak, you and I cannot confirm that the incident that happened in KNUSD is a COVID-19 case. Noted. I'm saying the students the are demonstrating. has now initiated processes to unravel what really transpired on KNUSD campus. But we have shown that leadership by instructing the leadership of the school to step aside so that the regional directors of education will conduct investigation before we would be able to unravel what really transpired. Echo, you, I, I don't think you got I'm my sure question. Cannot say, Echo, sure cannot say that Echo, I don't think you got my question. Somebody has died in the school 
and because of that you are laying all the blame on the doorstep of the government that cannot be the case. echo i don't think you got my you yeah, got my question teachers, echo the teachers, the teachers and the head mistress echo are supposed to serve as local parents in the school and that is why the ghana education service has given them that mandate echo for them to be able to if, if you won't listen to my question i would have to mute you and go on to sam i'm asking you a question i'm saying that yeah. we have what you're saying is understandable that you don't know what transpired, you have set in motion an investigation and asked the head of the school to step aside. Uh, but I'm asking you, you have seen the demonstration with the students in their masses. That is not good. That's a recipe for the spread of the virus. What else would you be looking out for? Well, uh, the point is that um, this is uh, an issue of solidarism. Um, I am saying this because the students are seeing one of their own to have gone through such a barbaric treatment. If the accounts that we are getting in the media is anything to go by. Uh, now, the Director General of Education through the Regional Directorate has issued a statement um, clearly showing that um, we have taken um, um, cognizance of what had, uh, actually happened on campus, uh, let me say the senior high school. And so um, we have already spoken to the leadership of the school to calm down to also ensure that they don't go ahead if there is a positive case on the school or in the school so that they don't go ahead spreading some of these things. Uh, the, the videos that I'm seeing on your screens, um, is a video that transpired in two days ago when the incidents actually happened. Now, yesterday when the regional di uh, director of education actually went to the school, mm. I also saw quite um, snippets of um, some of these incidences around where some of the students were showing that solidarity but the truth of the matter is that as we speak when you go to the school um calm has actually returned to the school the ghana education service through its regional director have shown leadership and it is actually managing the school school is in session students are learning and um, i don't think that uh, there's any cause to worry as we speak how how did you arrive at that yeah. conclusion Johnny, that there's nothing to here? worry about when the students were closer together the infection could have been present have you tested the students Johnny, don't you think that it is within the right of the student to show that solidarity to their, uh, one, one of their own when this incident happened? I have actually told you that there is a prima facie case that has been established against the leader of the school to have actually looked on for this incident to have happened. And so the Ghana Education Service can only show leadership, which we have shown that leadership. And I'm saying that investigations are going to be carried on so that when we find out people who are corporate, of actually what um, happened, then we are going to make sure that the sanctions are meted to them. L let me ask you a final question and move to Sam. Now, the president in announcing that students should return to school, and I've seen from your offices as well, that every secondary school is connected or linked to a clinic or a hospital at least. There's supposed to be an ambulance on, on uh, a recall for them as soon as they have a medical situation. The videos we saw of the boy complaining of a medical situation, teachers standing by, now the headmistress has been asked to step aside. There was no call that was made to a hospital. We didn't see an ambulance come to pick the student. And the headmistress refused to use a vehicle to convey the sick boy to the hospital. So clearly, the things you told us will be in place may not be in place. There is not even an isolation center. How do you still justify that it's safe to be in school? when the protocols you put in place are not working? Well, um, Johnny, that cannot be a good conclusion. Um, I'm saying this on the basis of the fact that uh, if you know Ken Westy very well, and I'm using Ken Westy um, Senior High School because um, that is a school um, that is uh, uh, making us have this particular discussion. Now, there is a Ken Westy Hospital very close to Ken Westy Senior High School. Um, the, Health workers may be at KNOC Hospital, but they may not know what is happening on the campus of KNOC Senior High School. Now, unless there is a trigger by the leadership of the KNOC Senior High School to have informed the leadership of the KNOC Hospital, or if you like, the health workers there. Now, if they fail to inform them, reason, I presume that the Ghana Education Service has instructed the leadership of the KNOC Senior High School to step aside because probably. There was a failure on the leadership to have informed the um, health directorate that is closer to the KNOC Senior High School that this is actually what is happening on um, KNOC campus. If you listen to the accounts by the students themselves, uh, the students are claiming that 
the leadership of the school, that is the teachers and the headmistress, actually look on for so many hours without attending to the child. Meanwhile, there's a senior, there's a, a hospital that is very close to senior, like here was senior high school. So I, I presume that there was a failure on the part of the leadership of the senior high school to have informed the, uh, the health directors in that particular uh, vicinity. And that is how come we have established a prima facie case against headmistress of here was senior Okay. High Thank you. Sam, step in for me at this point. Um, prima facie case, that's what Vincent says, has been established. And so the headmistress has been asked to step aside. Is this scapegoating or following the due process? Uh, and you heard him say there's a hospital closer to, uh, what do you call it, the school. You attended the KNUST, Vincent as well. So maybe you have a better appreciation of what it is. Share knowledge with me if you have. First time I met, Johnny, first time I met Vincent was um, as a young man. Uh, who was aspiring to be a student leader on KMU <laughs> years after I had left. And I'm, I'm, I'm gobsmacked that as a student leader or as an aspiring former student leader who today has found himself at the ministry and is possibly coming to parliament in the next parliament, he would want to play down the sanctity and safety of the life of Ghanaian students. It is reprehensible to say that. And Vincent, first and foremost, it is not correct that we are talking about one or two incidences in senior high schools, except you have not been listening to the head of the Ghana Health Service. Several schools have been mentioned by the head of the Ghana Health Service. At least in eight different schools, you've seen infections. Why? You want to see the, 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 the bodies of Ghanaian senior high school students and junior high school students littering our streets before you know you have to call government and your minister to action we cannot continue like this look johnny remember that when when the schools were being reopened mm. the ndc called on government and said let us have a mass testing of all the students who come to the school let's have a mass testing of all the all, all the teachers because johnny in some of the schools there are day schools These children go home and come back every day you see them in, on campus and pictures have come on social media of these children after school walking in town without a, a, a face or nose mask mm. and they go back the next day to the school so you cannot tell me that we don't know the extent of infection and what is and, and the simple question i am asking is is that look how can we say that older folks more experienced individuals the parents of these children should self-isolate our president is in self-isolation Chief Justice in self-isolation. The Minister for Education himself is in self-isolation. He, well, he's out of uh, self-isolation. Oh, he's left UGMC, but he's still recuperating at home. He's not come back into the... Party. But how do you know that? Are you yet a doctor? we are saying... Yet we are saying... We are saying... Huh, mm. That the children, junior high school children, 12-year-olds and 13-year-olds, I should go out. And... and it, it, it pains me, you know, because we are we are playing with this thing like we played with the sickness from the beginning, and today we have crossed twenty one thousand active cases. If if you had in, a in Sam, the schools, if you had a child uh, who was supposed to go and write B C or S S C or W C, would you allow them to go to school? Hell no. Like I said to you, it is better for my child to miss a grade than for me to dig a grave and bury that child. Hmm. Why? What will look? Listen, Johnny. Let me ask you a question. Anybody who, who is realistic will tell you that this year, this year 2020, you are not going to have any proper academic work or any proper way of life. Corona is with us till the end of this year. So when are we going to, if the children are, are struggling to write B, C now and Wasi, where are they going with it? Life must go where on. Where are they going with it? Life when, must go on. When, Life must go on when? When your, your, your information minister is telling you that we likely are going to shut down again. After the EC registration, that is August, school, the academic year should be starting end of September. You are being told that you will possibly have a shutdown at that time. The whole country will be locked down again. So why are you rushing the kids to? Okay. Which Vincent. universities are you sending them to? Mm. Vincent. Look, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Nigeria. 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 And Johnny, let me land here. Okay. Nigeria. Nigeria has cancelled WASI for this year. They've cancelled it. And, and Johnny, it's not going to be the first time. In the 99-2000 academic year, we shut down our schools, we shut down the universities, and so there was no academic year for a year. There was a backlog for a year. We took care of it. It is responsible governance to say that, look, we, we value the lives of the future leaders of our country. 
We value the life of our kids. And for that reason, we are going to shut down. Look, you've canceled the league. You've canceled the football league. And you're saying that that, would, that is put on hold for a whole year. A whole football league has been canceled. So why are you not canceling the... Why are you not canceling the... the, the, the How do you the compare recreational year? activity to an educational activity? Football is not recreational activity, Johnny. People and some of the of the school children, their parents play football. Some of these children in school, their parents play football in Hats and Kotoko and Eleven Wise and Hazakes and use the revenue they make from that to pay. Some of these children, their parents are physiotherapists with these football clubs. It is their earnings from there that they used to pay the fees or take care of those children. So football is not recreation. We're talking of the Ghana Premier League. Okay. It is a profession. Let, let, let me bring in uh, Vincent. Vincent, at this point, I will ask you the same question I asked Sam. And I'm asking, if you had a child of school-going age who is supposed to sit for the BC or WASI, would you let them go to school, one? And number two, uh, maybe you lump it together uh, and, and answer the question that Sam says there's an underdealing of you trying to aid the Electoral Commission to do the registration. And once that is done, you will shut down. First, answer my question. Would you let your child go to school in these times? Johnny, um, the, the truth of the matter is that there is an institution or there is a body. No, Vincent, answer my body. question first. Would you no, let I'm your child go to school don't, don't, in this time? Is it yes or no? It's a simple thing. Then you no, can go no, on and explain. No, no, you, can't, you can't just force me into one peg and say yes or no. I'm just saying that the institution that is clothed with the legal instrument to be able to oversee to uh, the management of our schools is the Ghana Education Service. This is a body that is a creation of law. Now I'm saying that there is an agreement, um, whether formally or informally, um, by the Ghana Education Service and parents, that in instances whereby the Ghana Education Service elects that schools will be opened, uh, in a subtle manner, we are indicating to the parents that we are able to take care of the students. Now as a Ghanaian, and as a law abiding um, Ghanaian, um, the president issued a statement. Vincent Dasefwa, uh, Vincent Dasefwa, you, you have nephews and nieces. You have nephews and nieces. You are now, seeking to go to parliament. You are the PR of the Ministry of Education. Would you Johnny, allow Johnny, your on. student, you your child to, to go to you school? Have to situate, you have to situate it in a proper context. You can't box me into the issue that I should just answer yes or no. I'm just saying that I am a law-abiding individual. The president has issued an executive instrument that schools will have to be open. And the president gave uh, promises to the effect that we are going to provide N95 nose masks to every individual. We are going to provide Veronica buckets to every school. We are providing sanitizers to every school or every individual. We are providing tissue papers so as to ensure that the protocols are observed. And you are saying that as a Ghanaian, I will have to defy what the president is saying. Are, are you saying that you don't have belief or trust in what the government is saying? In other words, I'm telling you in other words, you will allow your child to go to school if all these conditionalities are met. And as it stands, the students we saw demonstrating didn't have N95. The students we saw demonstrating, we didn't see them holding sanitizers. We went to the school, we saw sparingly Veronica buckets. Again, I'm asking you, would you allow your children Johnny, to go to school is, in is, these is times? Is it not part of the reasons why we have allowed the headmistress to step aside because the government has provided all these things to the students i am telling the authority that every student across this country has been provided with n95 at least about three of them so if the students are not using the n95 the buck stops with the leadership of the school and that is how come we have allowed the headmistress to step aside now i'm saying that this is one school out of the 700 senior high schools that we are having. Okay, you have now, given me, you have given me have enough context. Oh, now, oh, oh, oh. now answer some my question. That. You have given me enough context. Answer my question. Would you allow your children to go to school? I've heard the law abiding, the president, provision of whatever it is, and uh, the headmistress uh, being asked to step about aside. Me. It's not about me. The mm. point I'm trying to uh, tell Johnny, you Johnny, he can't that. answer the Ghana, question. Ghana, he goes to Ghana church, he can't answer the question. The Ghana Education Service has elected that schools will have to be open. I am telling you that as a law-abiding citizen, I have listened to a body that is my creation of law, and I don't have any difficulty whatsoever allowing students to be in school when there's, um, the government is saying that schools will have to be open. Now, apart from that, the government has also indicated its willingness to safeguard the, um, the safety of our children in our various schools. Now, if you check the other West African countries, as 
um, Sam was actually at Nigeria, the yes. Um, when we decided that Ghana will have to write the West African Examination Council, um, per the statement that I saw from other countries as at last two days or last three days, um, I realized that the other countries are also um, subscribing to the West African Examination Council. So I don't know where he got his uh, fact from the fact that um, Nigerians are also not going to write the WASI or if you like, they have um, um, uh, issued a statement that they are not going to be part of the West African Examination. What I know is that other West African countries um, has also subscribed to the writing of the West African Examination. Now, he also made issue of mass testing. Uh, we have said this over and over and over again, Tony. Um, we said that mass testing may not be the ideal way to go. Even when students are demonstrating. If you, test, if you test a student today, the results will come two, three days later. Now, within that two, three days, you are not going to isolate that child. That child will not be isolated. Within that two or three days, it is possible that that child will also test positive. Is that or not may the is that not enough reason to keep them out of school you then? May, you, may have, you may have the idea that that child is negative after the test has been given out. Meanwhile, the child will be positive. So we decided, through the advice of the Ghana Health Service, that the ideal way is not for us to go on that mass testing. Rather, we need to allow them to go through the proper safety protocols. And that is how come we decided that uh, children will have to be in school by following the... Uh, the, the exact protocols that the World Health Organization, if like the Ghana Health Service, um, actually advised the Ministry of Education and the Ghana Education okay. to Vincent, put in place. Now that that is the basis, Vincent. That is the basis for the children being in school. Now, yes. from what we're seeing on the video, in the videos, the <laughs> students have broken the social distancing protocol, which is very, very key in all the protocols that you listed. They have also broken yes. the protocol of wearing the face mask. When have yes. you decided to go back to the KNUST SHS to do this test that has become necessary? If you have seen the videos, and I'm sure you have seen them, we're showing but, them Johnny, on TV is that now. Not why, is that not why the leadership of the school, that is the headmistress, has been made to step aside? Is that, is that the testing? Like, is that the testing? When you ask the headmistress to step aside, that's testing? As part of, as part of our regulations to ensure that students go through the proper protocols, we allowed every teacher, every headmistress to be aware that students are supposed to be in their N95 whilst on campus. Now, if the students are not in their N95 whilst on campus, the bank will have to stop with the leadership of the school. And that is what we have shown, that the leadership will have to step aside so that investigations will have to be conducted. After the investigations, sanctions will have to be meted out to people that we are seen to be um, um, corporates or if you like, allow mm. such barbaric incidents and, and, and all this we time cannot say, we cannot see we cannot and, and all this time and, and all this time while you wait and all this time no no hold on put don't on put on record yet yeah, hold on not even a single person has died out of covid 19 in our various so schools. and while you while you investigate and and all of that and ask the headmistress to step aside the virus will wait is that the understanding of the ges I didn't get that. I'm saying that you have asked the headmistress admiss to step aside. You are investigating to find out what exactly happened. But we have seen the student massing up. A recipe for disaster. No social distancing. No mask. You're saying that the virus will wait. Is that the understanding I get from you? Johnny, is that not why I'm saying that we are waiting for a recommendation from the regional directorate of the Ghana Education Service in Ashanti region? Then the Ghana Education Service will know the steps that will have to be taken. I don't know what is difficult about this answer. Okay, final one. Let me ask you. Sam says there's some under dealing going on that you are aiding the electoral commission to do their work. So you are forced to keep the students in school so that by the close of the registration process, and as Koju has indicated on another radio station, you are possibly uh, going to lock down all of us after the registration process is done. Is there any truism to that? Akon, did you hear me? Uh, hmm. Maybe we may have to refer Sam to chapter 7 of the Constitution. You, you may have to refer him back to chapter 7 of the Constitution. I know he's a lawmaker. Um, the, the, the duties of the electoral commission um, is one um, that nobody can influence. And so I'm very surprised that as a lawmaker, the electoral commission has to um, um, actually entertain um, the creation. The creation.
the creation of the electoral commission by chapter seven of the nineteen and Constitution. Well, I thought we're, we're having challenges with your with your uh, with your bandwidth. Let's go to let's go to Etanam and uh, get some messages from Etanam. See, and then my guest on via Zoom is uh, Adonis Sam George. Uh, he's the member of parliament for the Ningo Pram Pram constituency and also a convincer de Sefua, who is the PRO for the Ministry uh, of Education as well. Uh, Etanam, welcome. Yeah, thank you, Jenny. Mm. Interesting conversations there. And good morning, TV3. Please, as for the temperature guns secured by government for schools, it's a scam. One can tell the country it's coming from. You can check temperature 10 times uh, uh, on one student, and I can assure you of 10 different results. Meanwhile, our leaders are using quality temperature guns to know the exact temperature at a time. Government is never thinking about our welfare at all. Come December 7, Ghanaians will make a right decision for uh, leadership from Victor Rapchain Ho. Good morning, TV3. Please, this government must be serious about our kids. We can't sit down for this government to play with the lives of our kids anymore. Hashtag schools must shut down now. Kweku Nyamiye Amori says that this government does not care about the next generation, rather next elections. Look at what they have exposed our kids to. Posterity will surely judge them. John and Jane will surely come to power come December 7. Nyamiye Mori said that. Good morning, Johnny. I think that our country is lacking leadership. We joke with the lives of Ghanaians and still think they've shown leadership. Uh, God have mercy. Nana must go. Michael inside Achimota. Good morning. I don't subscribe to the idea of GS officer about analyzing statistics of having 700 SHS schools and a couple out of the 700 schools have had COVID-19 cases being a yastic by compromising precious lives. Very abysmal justification. Gabi from Achim Begro. Just imagine if the coronavirus pandemic had struck in 2016 on top of Dumso and uh, top of Dumso and Damahama. When God gives you a bedding, he accompanies it with a head cushion, kechiri, to ease the weights. God gave us a kufado in Baumia for a reason. Je, je suis blueprint. <laughs> okay, I'll leave that one. Good morning, uh, Johnny and co-panelists. I'm very worried about government's behavior towards the fight against the virus. It looks like they are somehow confused. I think nothing good will come out of the students if government doesn't close down the schools and go uh, uh, design, redesign the strategy. Fear has gripped these children, which can affect their learning and preparation towards the exams, and if care isn't taken, they will all fail drastically. Johnny, because we have insignificant number, parents should not worry. Is that what the PR is telling Ghanaians? I'm sad. Me from Mampubi. Hi, Johnny. It's a course G is showing leadership. Uh, it's showing leadership where the PPE is not supposed to be supplied before school reopened. My school resumed for full week without the supply. Later, when they came, the Veronica bucket had even been branded with posters of the MPP parliamentary candidates. With, uh, we have a backward service. Kwame sent that. Uh, good morning, TV3. I'm totally disappointed and disgusted that MPP and NDC continue to play political game during this crucial moment of COVID-19. I believe this is the time we all have to come together to find ways by which we can overcome this COVID-19 Lucifer. Our hospitals are under uh, resource. More people are getting infected every day. I expect both parties to show leadership than engaging in a uh, blame game. Dollar from shall Take two more. Uh, good morning, uh, Johnny. What uh, is Sam George saying? The fact that we have few cases in our SHS, which is insignificant ratio, doesn't warrant a total closure of the schools. Do we have to engage in propaganda uh, sophisticity always just to gain political capital? Measures have been put in place in the various schools to follow the protocol. We should all not try to paint the picture, see if all is disaster as far as fighting this pandemic is concerned. Why don't we close down all market centers since that's where most people congregate every day and even disregard the protocols? Please, the NDC should give us a break. Let me take the very final one. Good morning, TV3. So the president, chief justice, and other prominent leaders in this country decided to go on self-isolation for testing negative or positive upon doctor's advice, but don't want to close down schools upon the advice of the Ghana Medical Association when they called on the president to horse their registration and reopening of schools. What a world we live in. 
Some people are more important than others. God save us all. Chachu sent that from uh, Spintus. We want to pause Thank here with the messages. Back to our guests on uh, Zoom and wrap up the conversation. Sam, the Ghanaian Times is reporting that the government has spent a total of two, uh, 233 million uh, on the nationwide free water supply announced by the President for the months of April, May, and June, the part of a package to combat the outbreak of the coronavirus. The free water supply was for three months and taking her turn at the Meet the Press series, the Ministry of Information, the Minister for Sanitation and Water Resources, Mrs. Cecilia Abinadapa, said her outfit in collaboration with Ghana Water Company supplied and installed a number of water tanks to various regions. And it says that that's how much it cost us. You are in Parliament. You saw the figures as it came, the request that was made. What do you make of this figure that we're being told of now? and the water supply that we enjoy for free for three months? Well, Johnny, um, the water issues are critical, and I will deal with them, but just indulge me one minute. It's important and clear, I just want to put on record for our viewers, that my, my brother Vincent was unable to tell you yes or no if he will send his own child to school given the situation. That in itself should be clear enough advice to anybody who is listening. And we would interrogate the educational sector properly, like the claims that they have made against the running mate of the NDC, that she cancelled uh, uh, book and teacher training allowances, which is false. There's evidence of it that she paid and actually instructed payments in 2016. Coming to the issue of, um, coming to the issue of water mm. and the claim that is being made, I think we will want to interrogate the issues in Parliament. Um, we would be immediately filing questions to get a detailed breakdown of that uh, expenditure. You see, when government said they were giving free water across the country, or Ghana Water was giving free water, let mm -hmm. us put on record that Ghana Water supplies water to barely 30% of the population of this country. Barely 30%. Many parts of the country are supplied water by community water, mm -hmm. not Ghana Water. Ghana Water's connection is in barely 30% of the country. And if we're being told that this huge amount is what is spent, over 200 million mm -hmm. is spent on giving water, uh, we want to interrogate the figures. We want to see, on the average, mm. how much does Ghana water make on their books? Okay. Do you understand me? On right. their books, when, right. when Ghana water is selling water on the average, okay. how much is their revenue every month? Because this will suggest, given the figure, that on the average, every month, Ghana Water makes 80 million Ghana right. cities. Right. Is that the case? We know that Ghana Water is struggling to even pay at times its suppliers who supply them uh, uh, chlorine for the disinfection of water. So if Ghana Water is making 80 million Ghana cities every month, because if they're telling us they spent around, what, 240 million there about? Right. For, for, for three months. Three months. That, was, right. that would presume simple mathematics. Um, even uh, and I'm sure if my math is wrong, the the PRO for the Education Ministry can correct me. Two forty divided by three will be eight. Eighty million cities a month. If Ghana Water is really making eighty million Ghana cities a month, we should be able to see the track record. At but, Ghana but Sam, Water. your side but in if Parliament. Ghana Water's books do not Sam, show eighty million cities every month. Sam, your and side in Parliament. Is telling us today. Mm. Sam, your side in Parliament. That's what I'm saying that. Your side yes, in hello. Parliament had asked for an audit of the COVID spend. You wrote to the Auditor General. Johnny, you are very faint. I'm struggling to hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Is it better? Yes, this is better. I'm saying that your side in Parliament had asked the Auditor General to audit the COVID-19 spend. Uh, have you received any response? Part of it was how much was spent for water, for example. Have you received any response yet? Well, uh, to the best of my knowledge, nothing has come yet. And unfortunately, I don't expect it, us to get anything apart from if anything is going to come today from the gentleman who the government has asked to act in the stead of the indefatigable, incorruptible Auditor General, Mr. Yao Dominic Domelevo, um, the, the gentleman there doesn't inspire any hope in anybody. I mean, he, he, within 24 hours of Domelevo living there, he cleared the cruel merchant of Safo Mafo. And so I do not expect any, any credible thing from him because he, he, he has not engendered credibility in his activities so far. But we have not received any document. However, I'm, like I said, we would, we would ex expect a detailed audit of the covered relief re uh, monies that have been spent. Mm. But Johnny, even before that comes, I'm so just quickly saying, wrap up. So it's easy for bike. us to find out if what government is saying mm. is credible or is another possible avenue where you would have seen graft and theft of the taxpayers' money.
I'm saying Ghana Water has been supplying water before government decided to come in and give its intervention for three months. Mm -hmm. Let's not even look at January and February. Let's look at March. How much did Ghana Water make in March? How much did they make in, in April? Okay. Right. And then of January, February, March, April. Let's strike an average and let's see. If you were making 80 million or around that figure, you would understand and say, okay, then what government has spent is fair. Mm. But if Ghana Water's revenue was around 25 million or 30 million, and then all of a sudden, for three months, government is saying they have spent 240 million and over, which would then mean that every month will cost us about 80 million. Mm. Why? Under this three months, Ghana Water has now connected new communities to the national water supply grid. Okay, let me bring Absolutely Vincent not. in. Vincent. And that's what I'm saying that. Like in every other sector, mm. look, they claim that they spent what 20 million or 40 million feeding, in fact, 80 million, 84 million is the correct figure on feeding for, 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 for the three week lockdown. Mm. 84 million Ghana cities is what government claim they spent on feeding. Again, another figure you, you that have, we you, want have to doubt, you have doubt out of, of all the figures million, that government said 40 out. million was used to supply cooked food, some and 44 million was used to buy food at buffer store. Mm. Sam, why do you have doubts so, of all the oh, figures that government presents? It's the government. You must trust, the, you must trust the government. Sorry? Why do you doubt every figure the government puts out? Because the, the government is made up of very dishonest people. Unfortunately, very dishonest people. They have not shown us honesty. They've not engendered honesty. They don't, they've not shown us any way, any reason to trust them. Every time we have scrutinized the, the, the things that have been put out for, by government, they feel, look, like I said, Vincent is on the line, so let me use his ministry. Okay. Vincent's minister has put out information that said that Professor Jinnana uh, uh, uh cancelled the book and research allowance when she was minister. That has been, that is a lie that has been regurgitated by Yabu Abinga Samwa at their last press conference. And I'm saying to you mm. that that is not true. It's a lie. Okay. Vincent's thank you. Vincent's minister uh, and his thank ministry you. Thank you. You're off. Vincent. They're not, they're not showing Vincent, you have a platform. Sam, I'm muting you. Vincent, you have a platform. Um, Sam is doubting the figures that, that you're putting out. Uh, Johnny, two... you sound very faint. I'm really struggling to hear you. Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, it's uh, I think it's a spiritual problem. Uh, <laughs> some so, uh, Vincent, speak to the issues. Uh, 233 million in excess of that for free supply of water. Sam says I don't believe the figures, and that's because previous figures that have been fact checked turned out to be false. What do you say? Hello, Vincent. Wow, Vincent is frozen. Hello, Vincent. Hello, Vincent. Hello, Vincent. Ah, uh, okay. Well, we will have to we will have to leave it here. Unfortunately, that we couldn't get Vincent uh, to speak with us on that one. But I want to thank you very much for your time, Sam. Sam George is the Member of Parliament for the good people of the Ningo Pram Pram constituency and also the uh, Echo Vincent de Sufoa is the PRO of the Ministry of uh, Education and they've joined me. I would really have wanted to uh, hear from Vincent but as it stands now I am unable to connect with him and exactly uh, hear his thoughts but also let's say a very big happy birthday and before that uh, let's uh, a message from the uh, ambassador Sam Piali sent this to me. It says, it's only in this country that a government will hide behind the law to expose children to death. Law is interpreted within the ecosystem of common sense and humanity. Why is it that any time this government seeks to force their decisions on Ghanaians, we lose innocent young children? The other time, it was Kumasi Academy today. It's technology, uh, secondly, uh, the KNUSD, uh, SHS. And what is the reason? to isolate the president and his ministers, but expose children to of Ghana to death. Echo, you must be sad that your failed promises are killing children. Uh, Ambassador Sampiyale is also a lawyer there, so maybe he's speaking to the law. And